Welcome to Larry's Library, and this week we're going to take a look at the Swamp Thing, the Bronze Age Omnibus. Gonna get right into it. So I finally got through it, finally finished this up. It's been taking a while because, you know, the Bronze Age stuff is a little bit slower to read because you got smaller panel art, you got more panels on a page, and so most of the time you have more text on a page. It takes longer. But I did enjoy it thoroughly. And I'm going to tell you what I thought about it. So a little overview first. This thing is thick. It it actually looks like one of the more uh, current Marvel 1,200 to 1,500 page omnibuses when you look at it. That, that's how thick it looks. But these pages are thicker than most of the current Marvel omnibuses and maybe some of the DCs. I don't know, but it's got the old-fashioned thick paper on it. Now, it's only 928 pages which doesn't sound like it should be a big burden to me, you know, but with these extra thick pages, it's a little dicey, but I'll get into that in a minute. Anyway, it is 920 pages. It's still in print. Uh, well, maybe it's not in print, but there's certainly plenty, copies, plenty of copies still out there, so maybe it's in print, I don't know, but it is available as of the time of shooting this, still at InStockTrades.com, which is where I got mine. Uh, the list price on it's $99.99, and uh, current uh, in-stock pricing on it is $57.99. So at $57.99, 920 pages, it's a good buy. Even with a build that is mostly good, the only relatively minor problem I had with the build on this is the paper that's glued to the actual bound sections of the book. Uh, it's, it's a little loose. In the last, like, I don't know, 30 pages of, of, the, of the read, I noticed some of that there was some separation. I think this will be very easily fixed with a little bit of uh, binding glue, which I plan to try that repair myself. Very minor. I mean, it's all holding together well though, so pretty good. But it is a very big book for sure. Now this one is written mostly, but it's mostly written by uh, Lynn Wayne and Martin Pasco, and most of the art is by Bernie Wrightson and Nestor Redondo and Tom Yeats. Those three are the primary throughout all 920 pages, and they are fantastic. Spoiler, it's got some fantastic artwork in it throughout. So what this collects is the first appearance of Swamp Thing from House of Secrets 92, and then the first series, and that ran for 24 issues, and then the first 19 issues of the second series, which was called uh, Saga of Swamp Thing. Now, Saga of Swamp Thing is the series that has the celebrated run by Alan Moore, which is not collected in this book. That is collected in the big, beautiful absolutes, which I have all three of those. Haven't read those yet. That's probably next. So more on that later. It, it also includes the first Swamp Thing annual, which adapts the first movie appearance of Swamp Thing, which was the movie directed by Wes Craven. Uh, he, Teenage version, uh, Teenage Larry saw that and basically all I remember about it was it was Wes Craven and it starred Adrian Barbeau. I, I'm just going to leave it there. So, oh, I should also mention the art team of Stephen Bissett and John Toddlebin, their first Swamp Thing art, artwork happens in the last half of Saga that's included here. And that is some stellar stuff too, for sure. So, yeah, uh, you, you can well imagine I enjoyed this thoroughly. It was a really, really great read. Fantastic artwork, like I said. Uh, you know, Bernie Wrightson does, I think, the first 10 or 12 issues of this. And I am a huge Bernie Wrightson fan. I mean, everybody should be. The, the guy was a master. You know, we lost a great talent when he, le when he left this earth. But at any rate, so I was really, you know, as I came to the end of his run, I was like, oh, man, this, this is not going to be near as good without the, uh, without the Bernie Wrightson art. And it surprised me because Nestor Redondo takes over the uh, the book after Bernie Wrightson's done with it. And I gotta say, Nestor Redondo, I mean, I always kind of liked what I'd seen of him, but I gotta tell you, I would say he is about, at least in Swamp Thing, he's about 85 to 90 percent as good as Bernie Wrightson was on it. And that's high praise indeed for me. Yeah, he, he was really great. And he finished out uh, pretty much all of the rest of the first run, that first series. So, 
Now, one thing that's odd, and probably the only thing I can really complain about with this whole volume, other than a little bit of issue with the binding, is there, this is a little bit of a spoiler, but I'm going to go ahead and spoil it because basically the plot lines ignore it anyway, so it's, it's not going to be a big uh, hit, and it was a, not a great story either, so probably the biggest dud in the book is the last bit of story arc from the first series. They decide... <laughs> to uh, basically they decide to let Alec Holland, the Swamp Thing, get cured. And he reverts to human form. And then the book is promptly canceled. <laughs> now, I don't think that's why it was canceled. I think the, from what I've read, the, uh, the sales were, f were faltering before they published those last three or four issues of the first series. But for whatever reason, like I said, they, they decided to allow him to be cured. And he becomes human Alec Holland again. And then it's like six years later, the movie comes out, and DC decides to resurrect the series, try to take advantage of the, the buzz from the film, and they start Saga Swamp Thing. And that's with Martin Pasco writing, Lynn Wein, the co-creator of the, the character, does the editing on the book, so he kind of guides it, which is good. And Tom Yeats on artwork, and he's really good also. I, I, I'm not sure he's quite as good as uh, Nestor Redondo, but he's, he's pretty close. Really good stuff there. Anyway, they totally ignore that storyline. Or at least that's how it appeared to me, uh, because I had never read these books before, before reading this omnibus. I had read, I had a few copies here and there, and I had read the trades, they collected uh, the Bernie Wrights and stuff, but I hadn't read all of the in-between. So before I got ready to do this review, I thought, well, I'm going to see what Wikipedia says about that, because that's very odd that they just jettison that whole storyline and they don't even try to sum it up. Now, I can see why they would want to get rid of it, because it, it did kind of suck. Definitely anticlimactic, not what you want to see happen, um, at least not that early on in a book this thick. So... According to Wikipedia, that whole storyline was resolved in Challengers of the Unknown 81 through 87. You know, I don't understand why they didn't include that, that in this book. I mean, yeah, the book was already really thick, so maybe that's why. But I would have rather um, made it two volumes, volume one, volume two, and went ahead and put those issues in there. <laughs> so then we could explain, because... Apparently, that's all wrapped up, and he ends up being Swamp Thing again. And so, then it makes sense, once you know that, to go into the second series, even though there was a six-year gap there before they started Saga. But I, I don't know why they didn't do that. I mean, they should have went volume one, volume two, made them each like 700 pages long, included those missing, that missing storyline, I think. But that is a minor quibble. And it's going to cost it one star for me, but, but that's pretty minor, minor because what you get here is a lot of great art and some wild-ass stories. I mean wild. you got uh, demons and magic, and you even got an Antichrist story that, that lasts quite a while. Try not to give too many spoilers. You have aliens, space aliens, dimensional aliens. It is wild, over the top. I mean, and, and I loved every minute of it. My favorite, probably individual story in this, involves them washing up on this island where they relive scenes from all of these famous uh, Hollywood movies. There's bits of King Kong, uh, bits of, uh, I, I don't even want to name them all, but uh, there's, there's a running bit having to do with Casablanca, and you see Bogart. I mean, <laughs> it's really well done, and I loved it. And I love this whole thing. I really did from start to finish. Just that one little quibble, that one little bad storyline at the end of the first one, first series. Other than that, this thing is fantastic. I mean, and you've been seeing it all through this if you've lasted this long. Fantastic artwork. I'm going to try to get some scans. And my, my idea here is I'll get the scans done before I do the glue repair. Because laying that on the flatbed is probably going to be a little dicey. <laughs> And I might make the problem worse, but I'm going to try my best to, uh, to keep it under control and not rip this beauty apart. Which, I should mention that, you know, uh, the uh, Bernie Wrightson absolute uh, 
the Burning Rights and Swamp thing absolute has been announced, has been solicited by DC. And I think it's been pushed back a couple times. So that is coming. Now, I don't know if it's just going to include the Burning Rights and stuff only, or it'll, I mean, I can't imagine, it's not going to include everything in this omnibus because they don't make absolutes that thick. I mean, they could go two or three volumes maybe. And you know, as much as I like this, if they do that, I'm probably going to double dip. <laughs> I'm probably going to buy those absolutes again. So maybe you don't want to, if you're planning on getting the absolutes, maybe you should, you know, kind of wait and see what happens there. But it's up to you. This thing's available now, and it's at a pretty good price. And yeah, I give it 9 out of 10 stars. This is definitely top-notch material for the most part. That one little caveat. Other than that, this thing is great. It really reads well. Now, one thing I was impressed with, having said all that, is uh, where... You know, they ignore that one storyline, and they seem to. And I was afraid that they were ignoring all of uh, his original crew, you know, his um, the people that he worked with. I, mean, I don't want to say their names because I don't want to give much away, but I'm talking about Agent Cable and Abigail uh, Arcane, and some of those characters aren't mentioned for the longest time in the second series. But they eventually do get mentioned, and that really brought a smile to my face. It really made me like this thing a lot more once I found out that they are not ignoring all of that continuity that was established in the first run. Yeah, so yeah, it is all tied together other than that one, you know, bit where he reverted to human. So yeah, I hope I didn't ramble too much on this and it made some sense. I went in with minimal notes because I, I just finished reading it, so I wanted to get my excitement in the video rather than spend, you know, you know a lot of time making bullet points for myself. But yeah, uh, I did love this thing, and, and well, you're going to see it in the artwork. You already have by the time you get to this, because this is probably the end of it. But yeah, um, so 9 out of 10 for me. I say get it, and if the absolutes come out later that cover some of this, you might want to double dip it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm crazy that way, though. I'm the, you know. Anyway, if you like this kind of stuff and you enjoyed it, uh, give me a thumbs up. And if you really liked it and you want to come back for more, please subscribe. And I will see you on the next one.